and welcome to Murphy's Garden. It's a lovely evening and I just thought I'd take the opportunity um, to um, have a little tour around the garden, just show you what's out at the moment. It's the end of May, coming to the end of May, and um, this is my favourite time at the moment. It's just looking lovely, all my favourite flowers and um, all the lovely um, tones, which I love, the purples and the pinks and the whites and, and little splashes of yellow. So um, we've just taken Murphy for a walk and every evening we usually go for a little tour around the garden. So it just would be nice if, if you'd like to come with me. So um, this is the hornbeam walk and you can see that the hornbeam is really starting to mature. So on this side it's getting very thick, on this side it is catching up, but it's putting on quite a lot of growth. We just need to tie in some of the branches, but it's starting to change the feel of the garden because we're getting this um, sort of division between this part and that part and it's creating a sort of um, light shade, which I quite like really. Um, so we'll just head through um, into the main part of the garden. And in this area, we've got the, the four quadrants. Um, and at this time of year, it's predominantly full of the alliums. They're the, they make a spectacular show. And these are all the purple sensation. And they're the original ones I planted um, way back um, a few, several years ago. They just gently sell seed. Um, they, they don't get too much. They just look lovely. Um, and the secret with planting alliums is to try and um, plant them in a herbaceous border because the, the foliage is quite ugly, it's quite yellow and not very nice. So if you plant them with other things like geraniums and um, lots of foliage, then it hides the sort of ugliness at the bottom. Um, so we've got the roses here. These are the um, ballerina roses that we moved from the parterre. We've got a nice big clump. I put in three um, rose plants and they're full of buds and I'm quite excited to see what they look like. Um, we cut, um, dug up and split the eupatorium um, last autumn because it was just getting a bit too big and um, sort of flopping onto the path a bit too much so that's what I've done and I think that's worked quite well I've done that on both sides um, and I think the star probably in this border is this beautiful iris it's just the most lovely colour of electric blue so it's nice just to capture that because they're, they're quite fleeting really but I see that it's got lots of um, bees um, in that even in this evening it's, it's um, quite full of bees so we'll just head around this way and I'll show you um, we've got the other iris, this is, this, uh, this is the time of year for irises. We've got this lovely yellow bearded iris. Um, so we've got um, that and, and in both sides here. Uh, and again, uh, this at the front is the um, London Pride, Saxifragra. So that puts on a nice frothy display at the front of borders. And I think what we've done, there's, where there's lots of gaps, I've got lots of annuals and seeds that we've grown in the greenhouse so I'm just going round infilling where there's any gaps and I've also got lots of um, dahlia tubers which I want to I love dahlia so I want to just really um, fill the area with dahlias ready for the autumn so we'll head now into the um, woodland garden but the sunken garden but before we do I'll just show you the pot so the pot had some nice pansies in it so they've sort of were over the best really I wanted to get the summer bedding in so we've put um, this little geranium, this is a geranium that was given to me last year and I thought it was so pretty. He's got this lovely little blush of pink on the petal. So we've put some diacea and other geranium and um, this osteospermum just to bring out the dark pink. Um, and then here is a um, euchre, just a little cutting of a euchre we took from the borders. And I just put this grass in the middle because that's nice in the wind. It's quite windy this evening and it just um, blows around in the breeze and it's lovely. So going now into the sunken garden so here we've got the um, laurels portuguese laurels and they make really good structural evergreen trees um, it has this nice kind of little frothiness of um, white flowers on it at this time of year and um, yeah they just provide year-round interest really good um, now we've had a bit of an idea in this area um, inspired by the, well, the, the clematis which is climbing up that tree, um, it looks absolutely stunning and it's gone right up to the very top now and it really, really looks, looks really good. So we were just looking at that the other day and, it, and um, it made us sort of have an idea. So in this area, it's mostly kind of greens and, and whites and quite a restful place to be. So at the moment, it's just a transitional area. There's nowhere to sit and linger. So we thought it'd be quite nice to have a seating area. Um, now, this area was quite full um, last year because we've got this um, big formium in the middle 
and then we had the pheasant grass either side which got quite big so it was quite a full area well those of you that have been watching the video will know we took out the pheasant grass because it had this habit of seeding absolutely everywhere so i got a bit fed up of that so i've taken that out and in its place i've put um uh, two very large miscanthus so they've gone in but they're not obviously quite small at the moment and then the formium we cut the formiums back because they were getting very brown and just not looking so good anymore so we cut those to the ground and they've started to reshoot really well and this one um i think it was about four or five of them so this one's coming back strongly but when we were standing here looking in this direction we thought it would be lovely to have a little seating area looking through that way which has got quite a nice view so perhaps next autumn or winter we'll move the box hedging and just make a little in you know insert in which we can have a seat so this formium may have to be relocated that's what we're thinking um, behind me there's this um, row of lime trees so we want to have a similar effect to the hornbeam um, we've got the pleached hornbeam um, as we saw down in that part of the garden and we want to do something similar with um, lime and these are the limes that we planted um, Joshua and I planted when they were tiny they were like this size when we bought them so they've grown they grow very very quickly so if you want a quite a quick um, pleached hedge then go with lime we haven't quite got around to pleaching them Alice has just been busy putting in the, the support structures which he's done really well so we've got this nice these nice supports in and the next thing to do will be to put in the bamboo structure so we are in the process of just working on a video for how to pleach um, trees so um, that's still to come so we're heading now into the woodland garden and this um, archway so when we put this archway in my ambition was to have it clothed in ivy it's taken such a long time for that to happen um i made uh, earlier videos i just talked about how this um ivy seemed to have a bit of vertigo it didn't seem to be growing up the arch but it finally is and it's looking really lovely and i love this effect which i didn't do but the euphorbia that's just growing at the at the bottom there the sad thing is is that the wind um, or it's rotting or i don't know what but the archway is now having got the effect now the archway is about to collapse so um, hopefully that can be repaired so in here um, we've got the silver birches which are now in leaf and um, we've got the addition of the two uh, multi-stem silver birches that we planted earlier in the year so this is one of them and you can see it's starting to get the nice white trunk at the bottom but it will take a few years just for this to get the lovely the white stems that we grow it for but um, I think the canopy is, is looking really nice it's really starting to to join so it's, I really like that effect and at the foot we've got some and um, this is a lovely fern we've got lots of ferns um, and just lots of woodland planting we've also got hostas um, these are the shuttlecock ferns which are lovely and this is a beautiful um, lilac tree and we lift the, lifted the skirts of that we um, took out a lot of the lower leaves and it just gives that nice multi-stem effect and means that you can plant underneath so we've put the um, as I say the ferns in now these hostas um, they were being eaten a little bit so I got one more bag of strolch we've put strolch in the um, come on to that in the parterre and so it claims that strolch stops um, slugs and snails so we've put that round the base of the hostas i've tr tried to take out most of the eaten leaves just to conduct a good experiment to see whether whether or not it will deter the slugs so interesting to see some of the plants here this is karokia which is flowering i don't think it's ever flowered before i didn't even know it had flowers lovely little yellow flowers and that's just mirrored in the yellow of the Deuronicum um, at its base there. So that looks quite nice. And these ferns are just lush and lovely. And, and then of course, we've got the, the big um, sprawl of um, London Pride or Saxifragra. And then here we've got the, um, the little um, Dicentra, which has now been renamed um, <laughs> Lampro Capna. Olivia is just my thing it to me because I keep forgetting. Lampro Capna, but we'll post the name of that. Lampro Capna Spectabla. <laughs> She's my thing it to me. Sounds like a Harry Potter um, spell. Lampro Capna Spectabla. <laughs> so it's got a new name, so we've got to try and remember that. Um, and then the grasses here, um, the bears' britches, the gunnera, 
Um, we're doing quite well with the paracanthus, which is on the back um, fence here. And we've planted some more along the fence because you want to get good coverage on that. We've also got a climbing hydrangea, which is finally doing something. So um, we've got a big gap um, here behind me, and that's where we took out, or we, we cut back the, um, the very large formium, but you can see here it is starting to regrow. And in fact, um, we were a bit worried that it, it wasn't coming back in the middle, but it is. And the thing with cutting it, 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 it does obviously, some of the ones that you cut, you get this very blunt um, leaf, but it doesn't matter because look, we've got loads of new ones coming through in the middle and they're pointy, they're lovely. So that's done at the world of good. So definitely recommend doing that. There's loads of new growth there. Perhaps in hindsight, we could have, because it has got this sort of dead bit in the middle, we could have perhaps cut it in half and even produced another plant. But that's why we've got this big gap here. Don't look too closely because there are lots of weeds I haven't quite got here um, with my weeding. But here, and this is another thing that we cut right back. This is the um, Steeper Gigantia. Um, and we've cut this one and le leveled it right to the ground as we've done at the top borders and that's worked brilliantly. It's really rejuvenated it and we've got these lovely little frongs and they're looking really nice. We've got a bit of a casualty in this part of the garden. This is a beautiful viburnum. It was lovely. It loved being here. It was very healthy and then very suddenly it's just lit. its leaves have all gone droopy, it's gone brown and it's died and we couldn't figure out why um, and we now know why we've got some moles in the garden and the tunnels are going under exactly under here and Alice has just put some probes down and there's big holes so that's where the tunnels is that's why it's just made the ground beneath it unstable so that's why it has died so we're just by the pond um, I don't think much has changed here um, we've got the lovely um, blue cyanosis out uh, at the moment I think the pond might need sorting out it's got a lot of um, debris and stuff in it so perhaps we need to clean that out but I think this area is um, pretty unchanged at the moment so in this area um, this is the the long pathway and you can see this is the napita that we grew from um, cuttings um, several years ago and it's really lovely it's um, this lovely um, blue um, haze which looks absolutely lovely that we had some um, white tulips in the in the spring which obviously have gone over so we'll just head into the parterre. So we're heading into the parterre. Um, so we've recently just uh, done quite a lot to this area in the autumn and, and even in the spring. So we've um, changed the roses, taken the ballerina roses out and replaced them with these Desdemona roses. And I'm really excited to see that the very first one is just in flower and it actually um, it is actually my little cutting, which is quite funny, it's only tiny, but it's my cutting is the first to flower. So, um, but the others are absolutely covered in buds, so I'm really, really excited. Um, we've put strolch all around this area. We did a video on strolch, and that seems to be suppressing the weeds really well, which is a big relief because I seem to spend a lot of time weeding this area. So we're just heading to the big herbaceous borders, and we've also just added, I um, had two um, purple, I can't remember what they're called, but purple clematis. So we've just put um, one either side here and we'll just clothe this archway with that because I thought that would look nice. Add a bit of, ex a bit of extra interest. And these borders, um, the sun is just starting to, to go over a little bit, which is a shame, but these borders um, are lovely just in the evening sunshine. And um, here we've got the lovely iridescent um, Stipa gigantia with the sun being backlit by the sun, or frontlit by the sun, I should say. And we've got the um, Camassias, which are still going strong, along with the lupins. And here we've got some of the Verbena bonariensis coming, coming out. Um, the obelisks, these are the obelisks that we moved from the, um, the parterre and in the middle of them we've put the um, Olivia roses that we took from cuttings um, so I think that's going to look lovely. They're not climbers but I think they do get quite big so I think the, um, the obelisks will just help um, support them and we've got um, delphiniums and lots to come. It's all very exciting although some, some things start to go over like the camassias like this one is reaching the very top so that will be over, going over soon but in its place we've got behind it we've got Achillea um, delphiniums, lots still to look forward to. So we've got this other, we've got the three steepers and these steepers um, we cut, um, the, although steeper is evergreen grass and you don't have to cut it back, 
um, we decided to because um, it was getting quite brown and quite old looking so we cut it right to the bottom leveled it completely and um, it's come back really strongly and what I like about it I want to try and keep it this size I don't want them getting bigger and bigger so if I cut it back maybe every two years and then just split it and keep it at the size I want it to be and more lupins the lupins it just surprises me all the different colors that they come in um, this one's yellow and purple we've got peach and dark purple we've got yellow it's just lovely I think they were wear a mixed variety when I planted them but they seem to all be so different and the other thing which I've noticed just in the last day or two is this this is another type of allium that I planted um, not last autumn the autumn before I think it's called allium bulgaricum or something like that but I'll, I'll post the name I can't remember but it's got these lovely um, little droopy flower heads and they're so pretty just hold them up for you to see. Just starting to close for the night, I think. And we've just done some uh, new, some of the planting in here. So um, I'm going with kind of yellows and purples this year, which I think looks quite nice. This area is looking a little bit scruffy. Um, certainly there's lots of weeds, but we've got um, a new plan for this area. I'm not sure when that will happen, but hopefully soon. So watch this space. And then similar planting on this side. Again, the camassias, um, actually the camassias seem to be um, a little bit behind on this side, so perhaps not doesn't get quite as much sun, I don't know, but, um, and this is the lovely um, yellow um, lupin, which is lovely. And I think in this border, which we haven't got in that border, so I must split it and move some across, but look at this poppy, it's just incredible. It's a massive clump of it. Um, it's oriental poppy, isn't that lovely? And it's surprisingly, it's been quite windy and we've had quite a bit of rain, but it seems quite surprisingly quite tough, really. Hello, Murphy. Hello, Murphy. Just got some euchre at the front and um, another little bit of London pride. So we'll head now into the vegetable patch. Hey, Murph. So we're now in the vegetable patch um, there's lots of work to be done here and I think this area has been a little bit abandoned of late so lots of weeds, loads of weeds which I've really got to get to but we've made a bit of a start. We've got lettuce, we're self-sufficient in lettuce, we've got um, a lovely rocket, we've got a row of dill which we had another, not last year, the year before which was nice, um, we've got a little bit of spinach, some onions, um, what have we got here, we've got um, um, kale, um, more onions, some broad beans, we've got the courgettes are in, the butternut squashes are in, we've got French beans, we've got peas um, and lots of potatoes. These are the potatoes that were in the, that we started off in the pots in the greenhouse, so I think I'm sure they must be ready, I haven't looked yet but I will turn those out soon. And we've also got some um, strawberries for the first time this year. So I'll just take you into the greenhouse. The greenhouse is um, changed quite a lot since we last looked because it was very full. Um, on the way through we've just got some some of the plants that we've been growing from seed which desperately need to go into the grind. We've got all sorts of things, the Nicotiana, um, uh, God, I can't really remember, Cosmos, lots of lots and lots of things. Um, and this is the little overspill greenhouse and we've got quite a lot of dahlias in there so they all need to go into the grind. Greenhouse has just got the tomatoes so we're growing um, black Russian, sun gold and um, what's the other one? What's the other one? Um, oh yes Gardener's Delight so we've got 12 tomato plants I think that's more than enough we've got a little chili plant here as well and a a small gherkin. I don't know what happened to my cucumbers this year. I don't seem to have had much success, so we need to perhaps buy one of those. Um, and then it's just the, we'll just go and have a look at the seating area. Murphy, go on. So this is our seating area. It's, uh, I was going to say the new seating area. It's not new anymore. This is the second year. So um, it still has got to mature because the hedges is, are, are still quite low around this perimeter. We've got the height on this side. But as they grow up, it will take on a whole new feel and will feel really sheltered. Um, we've got these nice planters and they're doing really well. They're starting to f 
fill out a bit and I really like that. This is the last part of the garden to get the sun so it's, it makes a lovely um, area to sit in. Right Murphy? Hey. Good boy. So I think that's the whole area, that's the whole garden done. So I um, hope you enjoyed that. Um, sorry the sun's not shining because that always makes it look nicer. But um, join us in the next video and we're very excited because Olivia and I are off to um, the Chelsea Flower Show which is on, we're going to on Friday. So hopefully we'll get to do some filming and um, we'll take you for a tour of the Chelsea Flower Show. So join us next time. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.